At that time, Mahamate, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, asked the Blessed One to explain concerning the deep-seated attachment to the existence of all things and the way of emancipation, saying, Pray tell me, Blessed One, pray tell me, Tathagata, our hot, fully enlightened one, concerning the characteristics of our deep attachment to existence and of our detachment from it. When I and other bodhisattva mahasattvas understand well the distinction between attachment and detachment, we shall know what is the skillful means concerning them, and shall no more become attached to words according to which we grasp meaning. When we understand well what is meant by attachment to the existence of all things and the detachment from them, we shall destroy our discrimination of words and letters, and, by means of our wisdom, enter into all the Buddha lands and assemblies, be well stamped with the stamp of the powers, the self-control, the psychic faculties, and the dharanis, and, well furnished with the wisdom in the ten inexhaustible vows and shining with varieties of rays pertaining to the transformation body, behave ourselves with effortlessness, like the moon, the sun, the jewel, and the elements, and hold such views at every stage as are free from all the signs of self-discrimination, and seeing that all things are like a dream, like Maya, etc., shall be able to enter the stage and abode of Buddhahood, and deliver discourses on the Dharma to the world of all beings, and in accordance with their needs, and free them from the dualistic notion of being and non-being in the contemplation of all things which are like a dream, and Maya, and free them also from the false discrimination of birth and destruction, and finally shall be able to establish ourselves where there is a revulsion at the deepest recesses of our consciousness, which is more than words can express. Said the Blessed One, Well said, well said, Mahamati. Listen well to me then, Mahamati, and reflect well within yourself. I will tell you. Mahamati, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, said, Certainly I will, Blessed One and gave ear to the Blessed One. The Blessed One said to him thus, Mahamate, immeasurable is our deep-seated attachment to the existence of all things, the significance of which we try to understand afterwards. For instance, there are the deep-seated attachments to signs of individuality, to causation, to the notion of being and non-being, to the discrimination of birth and no birth, to the discrimination of cessation and no cessation, to the discrimination of vehicle and no vehicle, of samskrita and asamskrita, of the characteristics of the stages and no stages, and the attachment to discrimination itself, and to that arising from enlightenment, the attachment to the discrimination of being and non-being on which the philosophers are so dependent, and the attachment to the triple vehicle and the one vehicle, which are discriminated. These and others, Mahamati, are the deep-seated attachments cherished by the ignorant and simple-minded due to their discriminations. Tenaciously attaching themselves to these, the ignorant and simple-minded go on ever discriminating, like the silkworms who, with their own thread of discrimination and attachment, enwrap not only themselves but others and are charmed with the thread. And thus they are ever tenaciously attached to the notions of existence and non-existence. But really, Mahamati, there are no signs here of deep-seated attachment or detachment. All things are to be seen as abiding in solitude where there is no evolving of discrimination. Mahamati, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, should have his abode where he can see all things from the viewpoint of solitude. Further, Mahamati, when the existence and non-existence of the external world are understood to be due to the seeing of the mind itself in these signs, the Bodhisattva can enter upon the stage of imagelessness, where mind only is, and there see into the solitude which characterizes the discrimination of all things as being and non-being, and the deep-seated attachments resulting therefrom. This being so, 
there are in all things no signs of a deep-rooted attachment or of detachment. Here, Mahamate, is nobody in bondage, nobody in emancipation, except those who, by reason of their perverted wisdom, recognize bondage and emancipation. Why? Because in all things neither being nor non-being is to be taken hold of. Further, Mahamate, there are three attachments deep-seated in the minds of the ignorant and simple-minded. They are greed, anger, and folly. And thus there is desire, which is procreative and is accompanied by joy and greed. Closely attached to this, there takes place a succession of births in the five paths. Thus there are the five paths of existence for all beings who are found closely attached to greed, anger, and folly. When one is cut off from this attachment, no signs will be seen indicative of attachment or of non-attachment. Further, Mahamate, depending upon and attaching to the triple combination which works in unison, there is the continuation of the Vijnanas incessantly functioning. And because of the attachment, there is continued and deep-felt assertion of existence. When the triple combination which causes the functioning of the Vijnanas no more takes place, there is the triple emancipation, and when this is kept in view, there is no arising of any combination. So it is said, The imagining of things not existent, this is characteristic of attachment deeply seated in all beings. When the truth of this is thoroughly understood, the net of attachment is cleared away. The ignorant take hold of the knowledge of existence according to words, and are bound up like the silkworm with their own discriminations. Hence, their ignorance of attachment deeply seated in their minds.